I've been involved in the BC coaching team for many years and one of the things that really annoys me when people present themselves for assessment is they have a pile of equipment and in particular we're looking at uh, kayak repairs that just doesn't work or has not been thought out beforehand and so I've tried to put together a series of bits of useful kit that you can carry which doesn't take up much room which does work in the environment and it's a pretty harsh environment to get things to work in uh, or on the beach when you could land and do a sort of more so a suitable repair for whatever you've done, be it a plastic or a uh, composite type kayak. Okay, we've now got a slightly larger repair, depending on what your kayak is made of. Uh, some of the pieces will stay together like a bit of a jigsaw but we've actually got a physical hole here and uh, we need something more substantial than just the uh, gaffer tape and or the epoxy putty. What we need to do first before we dry the area off is try and flatten out the damage we've got and you could use your pen knife or something but just poke all this back into the kayak. What we want to try and do is make a nice smoothish sort of surface that we can now use and stick something onto. For this type of repair and to bridge that hole, we could use flash band. This is used by roofers, particularly in gutters where there might be a leak. It's a bitumen based product. Uh, very sticky, similar to that of um, the uh, Denso tape, but not quite as bad. And it's made of bitumen inside with a, a backing on one side. We've got another uh, J cloth here, which we can use to dry the surface, so again if we can dry this as much as possible it'll give us a good fighting chance. If we could warm this up and if we know we're going to use it we could stuff it down the front of our buoyancy aid and that'll make it a bit stickier as you can see it's got a stick to it and literally just press it over the hole. Work from the middle outwards so we don't get any air bubbles. Once we've got it worked into the surface, okay you can use the blunt edge of something and that will really push it down making sure that the edges are nice and smooth so that they're not going to get peeled off when you're paddling through the water. Any sort of blunt instrument that you can use to push this on and that will bridge a gap, a physical gap. We can see it under here, there's our bitumen down here but it'll now physically make a, a far more watertight patch. To improve the adhesion of this, if we can warm it up a little bit, it'll make a huge difference. And we can do that using a small little blowtorch, like so. This little device will just warm the area up completely and allow that to make a real sticky bond. Light the blowtorch, and the key part here is to keep moving across the surface. Just warming that bitumen up and making it a real gooey mess. And it's ideal for your camp brulees while you're on there if you're that way inclined. Really important to keep that moving. You can see the edges here just starting to bubble. If we leave it in one spot you'll see it'll start to scorch. Keep moving. Just warm that area. Once we've got it nice and warm, just push that down a bit more, being careful that it's now rather warm and you don't want hot bitumen on your fingers. And that will make a really sticky secure patch, which you'll need a blunt chisel to remove it and some solvent to clean up the area before you make a permanent patch once you got back home. This little device has a, uh, a cigarette lighter uh, in the bottom of it. Don't lose that, and the advantage is, is you can refill this from a normal gas canister, a cigarette gas li uh, lighter canister. Lives back in here, and amazingly that little canister full operating the gas torch will last about 25 minutes. So it makes a good emergency uh, fire lighting piece of kit, uh, and also um, for lighting your stove in case you left your lighter back at home. To light it, it's got a slight safety catch on it, and that is we need to pull the, th the, the little trigger backwards first and then down. It takes a little bit of a knack to do this. Once we go, we've got a very hot blue flame. When we release the trigger, it will go off, but it takes about a second to extinguish, and this remains very hot, so be careful.
It will also weld a plastic kayak, and we'll come to that a bit later on. I've got my little bag of goodies out beforehand so we don't have to faff around. So if you wriggle out, climb onto my hatch and sort of keep your weight low. So sit up now, Liz, and then lean forward towards me. Get your legs down by the side. That's great. Yeah, don't come too far. Right, yeah. let's get these paddles trapped under there again. And if you can look after our bag of goodies. Using the other boat as a stabiliser. Lift it up. Drag it across. Let's try and dry it off as much as we can. Got it with my hat. Let's get the uh, flash band out, Liz. That's great. We're going to pull the backing off that, and we've got the little blowtorch, if you can just keep hold of that. Try and dry the boat off, and you can shield it slightly with the flash band, and try and warm the back of the flash band up at the same time. As dry as I can, it's pretty warm on my fingers here, you need to be a little bit careful, and let's try and get this down. Use the back of the torch, really good. Working from the middle, out to the edge. Smooth it out. Get the air bubbles out first. Once we've got the air bubbles out, fire up the torch again and just work your way back and forth. A little bit of shielding. Breezy at the moment, but I can protect it. Okay, so it's not as quick as a Denso tape, but it might just be able to stem that water out a little bit better than it, a little bit more robust patch than a Denso patch. And the blowtorch just makes it soft enough to make that stick that little bit better. If you've got the time, the more you can warm it up, the more effective that will be. I'm sure you've got all the time in the world and it's not a problem, we can get that really well stuck on. Okay, we've now got a, a, a plastic boat, we want to make a more permanent repair and one of the advantages of the little torch is we can actually weld the boat back together. Inside this pack is two metres of, as well as the flash band, plastic welding rod and we can use that to weld this split in the kayak and make a very watertight repair. Fire up the gas torch and it does take a little bit of practice. We've now got our flame and basically what we're going to do is warm this area and warm the welding rod at the same time. Once we end up with the plastic hot, we move back and forth and what we're now trying to do is have a clear bead of plastic without scorching our base plastic. Great for river boats, this. Oh, perfect for a river boat. Once we get to the end, let the flame extinguish. Remember it stays on for a few seconds and be careful you've got something that's very hot. Just leave that for a second. We've now got our first weld. If we need to bung up the hole even more, we can run a few more wells along here. And this will slowly, once it's gone from clear back to opaque, it then means it's cooled off sufficiently. This is quite warm to touch, so again, be careful. Kevlar boats and plastic boats, people do seem to think that they're indestructible. They're not. A good puncture in here, as you've seen with the axe, it's pretty easy to go through here. And the same with a Kevlar boat, they will puncture uh, quite easily. Once we start looking at welding a boat like this, this will get us home in a safe and secure manner, ideal on a, sort of an expedition. But once you start welding plastic boats, then the boat is probably coming to the end of its life. This uh, will warm up this area and tends to make the, the surrounding area of, the, the, uh, of uh, plastic very brittle and it may tend to split there again afterwards. So once this is cool, I can now touch it with my fingers, that's perfectly okay. Just cut the excess plastic off and then we can use that for another repair. Okay. 